Hey everybody, welcome to Mixed Life episode 23. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot for a second. Um, I'm here with Adam right now and Jen will be joining us a little bit later. Today we're going to be talking about how to achieve some complexity in your recipe without necessarily having to pile in a whole ton of different things. And we'll be talking about some other stuff throughout the show. So just, uh, you know, welcome and we're here and we're going. Let's, uh, let's see what's going on. Oh, I forgot to mute myself again. I always do that, Adam. Yeah, Adam? Yeah. You're shaking some right. stuff. Hey, guys. How's it going? What are you shaking there? Uh, the Grack Juice Remix Remix, where I've added a bunch of shit to concrete to make it more vapable. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's rough. I got to pop out the chat still. I'm a little behind this morning. So apologies for the, the late start there, guys. Uh, we were totally just like... Shoot, shooting shit, on the hangouts yeah. and like i didn't even realize what time it was so that's my bad i wasn't paying attention so bam what's up coffee man i figure we're gonna have kind of a quiet show today a lot of folks are out partying we're the getting ready for the eclipse and stuff and i would be too but our town is like a complete madhouse right now and there's like ten thousand people hanging out in the park that's like two blocks from my house so uh i'm not going outside if i don't have to right now uh maybe later and i have to work tonight anyway so uh, I hope everybody's having a great day. Uh, last week, we talked about, or last week, I put up a post in the Mixed Life group, in the Facebook group. Uh, one of us will get a link up for you in just a second. We put a link up in the Facebook group um, with a poll, basically, and I'm going to do that after every show on Sunday and sort of like kind of hit a top, at least one topic a week that um, that people want to hear about from us. Right? Like, uh, like last week, Dave, um, Dave Bellows, id 10 he put up a, a thing in the poll that said how to how to achieve complex recipes without having an overly complicated mix. And I think that's a really good thing to talk about, like especially when you have a lot of newer mixers that are trying to get up uh, into the forefront. And sometimes they're they are uh, you know they're they're overdoing it right, and they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot by trying to fit 13 flavors into a recipe, which which works. You can still do that. It doesn't mean that you can't. It just um, no sound. Adam, can you hear me? I can hear you. I'll All check right. it. I'll check it real quick. The beginning has no sound, guys. So if you're starting from the beginning. All right. Morning, Method. How's it going, Joel? Rick's got sound. Okay, we're we're good. We're good. Concrete's got sound. Yeah, it was muted for just a second. Um, I don't know why Dave. some people are having sound problems. Dave can hear us. Rick can hear us. All right. Well, let's let's move on. So complicated recipes, right? So you don't always have to have. Um, you know, a lot of people approach me with a they'll need help with the mix because they're trying to make something new and, and they'll have a recipe that's like ten flavorings already. And if if you're if you're hitting to the if you're hitting the the point where you're at 10 flavors and you're having a hard time getting it to balance like you need to scale it back and work on the recipe strengths before you add nuance you know what you really want is a really strong supportive base that has a little bit of of complexity on its own right like so if you're doing a strawberries and cream you want to have two really bold strawberries and two really bold creams right that are that are strong enough to carry a recipe on its own as good right it's a good recipe and then you want that fifth flavor, right? That's not sweetener, just uh, but a fifth thing that that adds the depth that you're after, right? So you you get that that simple base down, right? And then and then you can add your 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 complexity factor pieces like at the very end. Um, but when you're developing a recipe, you want to make that strong supportive base before you before you move on to uh, trying to add ten flavors. Now. That, that's not to say that you can't have a recipe with 10 flavors that works really well, because you can, and I have, and, and I, I do, um, even in the future. So, uh, okay, I don't know what that is. Um, sorry, I just got a Facebook message that was like popped up as important or something. Uh, anyways, so where was I? Adam, where was I? You're saying that it's better to build the base of your recipe before you your base shouldn't be 10 flavors your base should be you know five to six and then you accompany 
And if you're going to go that high, you should be able to kind of explain yourself for why you have that many ingredients. Uh, so that's, that's what you were discussing. It's yeah. I mean, you can do that, right? Like sometimes you, you build from your point a, right. Which is <clears throat> a two to four or five flavor base, right? Like a really simple, low percentage, lowish percentage, right. In the mid range. And before you start adding all those additives to get yourself to where you want with the complexity of a recipe, you know, scale it back and look, can I, can I get this more, this additional complexity by just increasing or decreasing one of the other uh, flavors first, right? Mess with the balance before you start making huge additions right so that way when you start making big additions it doesn't throw everything off to the to the shitter right away right like if i have a simple fruit that isn't strong when i add half a percent of cactus it's going to throw everything fucking sideways right um so get that get that strong balance before you before you move forward you know a lot of times when i, when I see people making like a 10 10 ingredient recipe and you look at what they're using a lot of times they aren't using the best ingredient of the options so when i say best ingredient uh let's say say you're using oranges right and then maybe you bought a flavor percent a flavor apprentice orange and it's maybe not the best and so what you're then doing is trying to hide the the poor quality of, of that ingredient by throwing a bunch of other uh, ingredients on it. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna muddle your mix and it's not gonna have the distinct notes that you're looking for. Uh, it's, so one of the things I'll always do is, you know, if you go to ELR and maybe you've never messed with like say kiwi or you've never me messed with uh, like a lime, go to ELR or all the flavors and look at how many uh, times it gets used and it's not the best way to do it. We've, we've talked about coming up with kind of a recommended flavor for type of list, but it, you want to find the best starting point, your, your original flavor. And then as you're adding to it, it's going to get better and better. If you're just trying to hide problems in your mix, uh, you're going to end up, you know, that's one of the reasons you'll see like a 12 to 20, let's say 20 ingredients. I've seen them and a lot of times if you look at what they're using they're trying to hide problems with certain flavors that you shouldn't have used in the first place so it goes back to you know know your flavors that's the important thing but it's also know know where that flavor that you have ranks in the level of flavors uh for that specific flavor note uh, and then from there you can build off of that uh, you know, if you're trying to build a peach with juicy peach as your base, you're not going to be able to get away from the candy aspect. But if you start with like a FA peach, white or regular, and then build back, you're going to have a much better uh, beginning point to then work your way back. And I, I find a lot of times uh, the more ingredients they have in it, they couldn't argue why. So that's kind of the important thing is if you're going, you know, into 10, 12, 13 ingredients, I'll totally do that on the one shots uh, like Chris and I were talking about. That's something that we'll do because it's one of those rare points where everybody has the flavors. But if you're just trying to fix problems, uh, a lot of times the answer to your, your 10 ingredient mix that doesn't taste like it should is that you're using the wrong ingredients to start with. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely something to be said um, for taking the time to vet the recipe, the flavors that you're going to try to use in a recipe to start with um, in a development. But Russell Branch does make a good point that some, a lot of people, especially newer folks, are using what they have available, right? That maybe they don't have the budget or they just haven't built the collection. Like, we have an, I have an absurd collection, you know, and so I don't, I don't expect everybody to have uh, thirty different, um, you know, like thirty or forty different flavors, you know. Uh, of each type right like i have 15 or 20 strawberries you know not everybody has that and i don't even like strawberries but i have them you know because i know i need them to develop but on the same note then you know it is important to to take time to do a little try to do a little leg work um you know or even just ask in the groups or ask one of us or something uh you know if if you're trying to build like the perfect peach right or perfect whatever and you just uh you know you pick you know pick one or two of those 
those flavors that are on the higher end of the spectrum. Um, you know, just to see uh, see where you want to start. You know, when you're thinking about that peach or that that strawberry flavor or whatever, you know, read the read the reviews. Um, read, every, read read people's notes. Concrete Rivers notes are an excellent source of of base knowledge for you to like base your purchase on, right? Because his, his reviews are super reliable and they're really very accurate. So um, at least I found obviously there's some differences with palettes and things like that. But the real key is to to vet to vet the recipe the ingredients you want to use and then to spend time with them uh, and learn their full range, not the range on ELR, right? Like the ELR like usage ranges and even the ATF, all the flavors uh, usage ranges to a lesser degree. Um, you know their their preference base. they there. There's a wide variety of applications for them, so they're not always reliable. Sometimes you can get better results after going much lower with the flavor than than you would think, and sometimes it's the exact opposite, and you can go you can go to a much higher percentage um, than you would typically think, um, or what's typically accepted. Um, the other as thing. you adjust the as you adjust the parts per million. One second, Adam. As you adjust the you know the the amount of flavoring in a in a in a mix, right? The the parts per million to specific volatiles properties really change, um, and you can get really huge, huge, hugely different results. Go ahead. I'm going to answer yeah. some so questions the, in chat. The other thing you guys have to think about is if you know we're we're talking about public recipes. So if you're figuring it out on your own or you're building a recipe and you think it's good. Uh, there's there's kind of another level that you have to think about, which is if you're going to release a public recipe and you're going to post it in the groups or you're going to, you know, just if you're posting in all the flavors, you want to make it public, think it tastes great, that's fine. Uh, but really what we're talking about more is if you're going to promo a recipe and you're going to push it out there, uh, you, you kind of have a responsibility to think that recipe over in in a couple different ways and one of them you know one of the things that i put into consideration is availability of flavors so you know it, we we have the the flavor line i have these flavors from uh england like decadent vapor and um salubarome and things like that that if i was to release that recipe you know i'll use hangson a lot and maybe in my personal mix it'll be you know two different kinds of a, a Hanks and tobacco. It'll have, you know, I, I even have the discontinued adder of rose that I'll throw in my personal mixes. But if I'm going to release that recipe, I, I dial it back because, you know, when you're putting up a recipe and maybe they don't have any of the flavors, that's going to cost the person mixing it money. And if you're, you're leading them down kind of the wrong path, where they're spending their money to make the mix when there was a way you could have made it better. Uh, so it's really more about if you're thinking about releasing recipes or you're trying to become known as a mixer. And when you put recipes out, there's a couple barriers that kind of get in the way. And one of them is I don't have that flavor. And, you know, something you can do is, is build from best selling backwards, you know, and that way, uh, if you're, if you're working with the top 50 flavors, uh, versus all kinds of strange uh, flavors that nobody has, the, the chance of people mixing your recipe goes up. So if you're thinking about that from that standard of trying to get your name out there, I recommend working in that top, that top 50, top 100 flavors versus, uh, you know, it's, it's just like people dropping something with like a, a Wonder Flavors or even the, the Real Flavors concentrates. Uh, Yes, it probably tastes really, really good, but chances that people are going to mix that anytime soon are not as good. So when you're making a recipe for public release, those are things you can think about is uh, the availability of the, the ingredients, the likelihood that other people will have the ingredients, and then how can you get to the same thing uh, with less ingredients? So that's another, that's a round when you're mixing. Uh, so after you get to what you think is a good recipe, Go back and look at your recipe and say, well, how could I get here with less of these things or less of this? Or did I use the right thing here? And uh, I don't know how many people do that revision type of round, but it's something that, that 
I do, and I'm pretty sure most of these guys that we mix with and the mixed team do it, where you come back and you say, well, how could it be better? Did I use an ingredient? Like, did I, did I use a watermelon that I had, but is there a better watermelon out there that I know? And then take the time to order it, test it. When, when you're going to release something for public, you know, if this is just for personal or you're just mixing and then releasing everything you mix, that's different. But if, if you're trying to be seen as a mixer and get your recipes to really pick up and, and get mixed a lot, those are some things that have to do with it. Welcome, Jen. Jennifer Hello. Jarvis. Sorry, I'm late. No, nah, that's all right. You got the legend returns. I right? couldn't find my headphones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm searching all through the house and they ended up being in my kitchen hiding. <laughs> nice, nice. I like it. My my kid hides my stuff all the time. I won't have the issue of my, my webcam falling over anymore. I have a nice gigantic <laughs> tripod now and it's standing way behind my computer on the floor. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, look at those fancy new black bottles in the back behind you. I see them. Mm, yes, they came in yesterday. Awesome. Oh, shit. I, don't I, have, it, but. I have actually, I cracked them all open immediately and tried them. Yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been trying them all day yesterday. I, my, the, the purple bubble gum, or purple gobble bum is what it ended up being, was, uh, it's so, it smells so much like grape bubble gum. It's ridiculous. And I, I made my husband try them all because he only tried the initial tests, which were all a little on the weaker side. And once we remixed them, um, he was like, oh, these are so good. He's like, the Island Breezy one is like, oh, he's like, I don't really get a whole lot of coconut, unlike me, who tastes nothing but coconut. But <laughs> he's like, it's so good. It's so refreshing. Like, perfect amount of culotta. Nice. I'm excited to try yours. Mine came in uh, two days ago, and I've been, uh, I've been messing around with them the last couple of days, so... Keep an eye out for the mixer collection. They'll be coming up soon. Um, and we're if you're interested in you carry lines in your shops and you are interested in carrying them in your shop, shoot one of us a PM and we'll get with our sales guy. Um, in Canada. Whatever. In Canada. In currently, Canada. we are currently only available in Canada. There may be potential for growth in the near future, but best thing. In other countries that don't have ridiculous regulations like the United States. <laughs> right. Exactly. So we're not looking at it right now, but we're we're looking at it in the future, maybe. Um, but they're exciting. We're excited. They're delicious. I was actually really surprised because, like, you know, when you tailor a recipe that's something like like a piece of art, right, that, that you made for from a DIY perspective, you know, um, obviously you have to change those things when you look at a commercial release because people who vape commercial juice aren't necessarily – as interested in in the things that you want out of your DIY flavors, right? So um, I was kind of, I don't know, I was on the fence about it, but now that I have them in my hand and I've tried them all, um, I've been very pleasantly surprised at my, at my own work, kind of like a, gave myself a little, you know, self pat on the back, right? I know, it's kind of like, wow, I actually made this flavor. <laughs> Right. It yeah. Tastes really good. I mean, and I've I've done that before, but never been as excited about like a commercial release, like a, a people trying something like this. Because I mean, these are all of these are pushing a little bit of boundaries as far as mixing terms go. Yeah. Well, you guys, we talk about what you guys made. Right. So some of these recipes were originally publicly available. Available, right? So so Sakura is a cherry blossom candy that's similar to my recipe, Sakura sweets. It's been completely moved around and remixed for a commercial release. So it's not the same as the one I have on ELR or ATF, but it is the same idea, right? So it's the same idea and the same platform, but I changed it for a commercial release for a few reasons, because it allows me to get it out into a wider audience. Um, it's more, it's more, you know, tank friendly. It's more, uh, it's friendlier to a wider range of devices. And to do that, you have to adjust percentages and, and ratios because otherwise, like when you primarily drip and you mix only for drippers, right? Like uh, you lose a bit of that experience for what, what it's like to vape flavors in a tank, you know, and, and, and recipes change, you know, there, there's a big difference in the, in the way you experience a recipe in a, even in different RDAs. But then when you start moving on to 
uh, RTAs or RDTAs. There's a whole diff there's a whole wide then, uh, range of. Then you got these little things which completely change it from those. Right, exactly, and then you have the mouth to lung devices or smaller low power devices. Um, you know, there's a huge huge change. So so to be able to be more viable in all of those devices, you have to make big big sweeping changes to your recipe. So my other recipe was Cabana, which is a a mango rum drink. Um, and ambrosia, which is a, a fruit salad, right? Like a, like a fruit salad and whipped cream. A lot of orange and cherry, a little bit of pineapple, some apple, all kinds of different stuff in there in a whipped cream base. And it's really super good. Um, they all turned out, I'm really, really super happy with them. Um, I'm stoked. So, yeah. Yeah, I've, act I've actually got to add nicotine to my uh, hummingbird and vape it because it's so good. <laughs> yeah, I, I already added Nick to Sakura because I haven't been able to put it down since I got it. I'm, I, I'm waiting for my Nick salts to come in though, so I can I can not add so much regular nicotine. Yeah, did you order from Nude or from Nick River? I ordered from Nude, and I know I'm not because it's going to be weeks before I get it. They haven't even sent anything other than a confirmation. So that yeah. Sometimes they're really slow because I think some people tend to forget that they formulate by batch recipes. So they don't formulate a batch of nicotine until um, until they receive X number of orders, right? So yeah. if they don't get a ton of orders, like your order is going to be behind. Um, I don't know Which if that's the way to approach it, I but it, the it, cuts down one. On, it cuts down on their 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 uh, the Nick River is also like the it's tip it's similar to the smooth formulation. Yeah, I, I was actually <laughs> contemplating trying both. I was going to order a small bottle from Nicotine River and see how the difference is. I did side by sides. I, I didn't really feel like there was a big difference, but you may, I mean, you have a more sensitive palate than me, so you may pick up um, a bigger difference than myself. Yeah, I don't like throat hit, so. No, I don't care for it either, um, not excessively anyways. In fact, I noticed with the recent batch of samples, like I could pick up the difference in three milligram nicotine between what I use and what what you guys are using. Even with Carolina extract, which is super smooth, like I can I can feel a little bit of difference. It's not a huge difference, but it's there. Can you guys yeah. explain uh, Nick salts to people that don't know? And then, have you seen anybody? Like I read a thing that Jewel Jewel pods add benzoic acid to the nicotine. That's, that's what all nicotine salts are based on. So yeah. are, it's already in there, so it's not something you need to add. No, that's part of the extraction process. Okay. So something I want to clear because that is a question that I've seen come up a whole ton of times. Is that the the term salts only applies to what's added to the nicotine base? So when you order nicotine salts from a company, you're not buying an additive to put in your already existing base. You're buying a complete like PG or VG based nicotine. Like just like you would order a regular free base nicotine, the dif the difference is in how it's processed, right? So the term salt is a little misleading. You're not getting a, a thing. You're not getting powder. You're not getting powder to add to your nicotine because I've seen that a lot. Like how do I add it to my yeah. nicotine? Um, I've seen a, that question asked a whole bunch of times, and that's not that's not what this is. Like nicotine salts are already it's already a manufactured nicotine base in PG or VG or however you prefer it. Um, but it's just the the salt is an additive, right? Benzoic acid is the salt, right? And the way it what it does is it changes the way you perceive the amount of nicotine, right? So <clears throat> depending on the dilution of benzoic acid, and there's a few other additives too that are um, they're eluding me right now. But basically, they change the way that you perceive, and the nicotine is delivered to your body, right? So they change the way you metabolize the nicotine and they change the way it feels when you inhale it, right? So they can provide a, a, a smoother delivery, or if you're after that 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 roughage, um, you can get the throat hit version, which is not cheaper nicotine, it's just a different dilution of salts. Yeah. And then it, it does a kick, I've heard a kick gives you a kick similar to like a cigarette even well, more. The, the reason that people are perceiving that is because you can take the nicotine salts in the smooth dilution and you can go back to dripping 12 milligrams and it doesn't give you that brutal throat hit, but you get that nicotine buzz like you did from, like you would from vaping 12 milligrams in, a, in an RDA, you know? And, and that's why in like the jewel pods and stuff, they're doing 50 milligram. It's, it's significantly higher, but it's mouth to lung. So if you're doing mouth to lung, you can go a little bit higher in your nicotine. You're not vaping as much. Right. Exactly. So, so it's just a difference in the way it's diluted. Now, I've messed with some jewel-style dilutions in the mouth-to-lung devices, and uh, 
getting the balance to work with the flavor is a lot trickier, but I think that there's some potential there too. You definitely have to go with a simpler profile because you have a lot less room. Um, you have a lot less room to add flavoring. I got this stuff. My hubby found some for me at a local shop. Oh, some CBD stuff? It's 150 milligram CBD. So it is the worst total, tasting right? shit ever. <laughs> 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 like, I, I literally went looking for this company because I want to offer them my mixing services. <laughs> This is the worst tasting stuff. It had lemon lime in it that I don't know what kind of lemon lime that you were using, but it's well, horrific. <laughs> remember when they when they process CBD uh, products, they use a lot of terpenes, right? Oh, I can taste the woodiness and the, the taste of the CBD. I don't mind that taste. It was the yeah. flavoring that they used. The I ended up adding uh, Flavor Art, Cam Tea, and some... Uh, flavor uh, uh, dark cure and some Zen garden and a bunch of stuff just to try to cover up the lemon lime it's not bad now it's actually vapable well that's good I'm glad that's, that's awesome yeah uh, I've been I've been slowly quietly trying to approach some CBD companies and uh, uh, medical companies out here that are that are starting to produce uh, extractions like that but I haven't really got anywhere yet but that's all right it'll, it'll come in time yeah, if they want to up their game, they're going to need to get some better mixers and better recipes. Yeah. Well, for I mean, they, don't have, they don't have mixers, right? They're just adding something they to make it not taste like flavor in there. Yeah. Because pure, pure extract, whether it's THC or CBD, like the actual extract, it tastes... It's, it's bitter. It's, it's bitter, kind of it's weird. woody. It's not, and, I like it, but it's not It's not for everyone. And not, especially the THC blends, like they're ultra skunky, right? Like yeah. ultra skunky, brutal. Uh, I had somebody ship some samples to me recently to work with, and uh, like the post office had opened my stuff and went through it because you know it smelled so bad, like so strong. Like they they didn't take anything, they didn't seize anything, but it was like they took a hit. <laughs> probably. <yeah. laughs> I mean, I live in a small town, you know, with a lot of sad land, sad sad postal post office ladies, you know. So they said down in. Uh... In California, all the U.S. post offices smell like pot because they they're always because <laughs> they're always shipping it. They ship it back and forth around California for stuff. So like they've just gotten used to the the post office smelling like a dispenser. Yeah, it's it doesn't rough. do a whole lot though. Right. So we covered it, the complexity thing. Uh, we covered most of it before you got here, Jen. Did you have anything to to add to that before we? Well, you know, you know how I mix, you know, I, I release my recipes, whether they're, you know, simple or complex or whatever. It's I mix things so that they taste good. And if that requires 15 ingredients, it requires 15 ingredients. If it requires three, great. <laughs> it's an easier mix. And, you know, I don't use a whole lot of Capella's and and TFA's. I've kind of graduated from using those. So, you know, it's. It depends on where you are in your mixing journey, how authentic of a taste you want, you know, what you're actually going for. I spend my time searching from brand to brand looking for a specific flavor that tastes the best. So if that's, you know, the more expensive medicine flower or if it's, you know, Flavoras or Flavor Arts or, you know, some other off the wall brand that nobody's tried yet, <laughs> then that's what it is. And I'll release the recipe, but it's not going to get mixed very often. And I know this. So, you know, I'm, I'm not looking to be super famous over my recipes. If people mix them and like them, great. If they don't, maybe they can use it as inspiration and try subbing other flavors out for what I have as a recipe, just as, you know, inspiration for a flavor profile. Well, right. And there's something we said to that too. So Russell Branch, I think, was the person that mentioned it earlier about, um, you know, what if we don't have, what if we just don't have that the access, right? We don't have the collection that, that some of the the bigger mixers have. And I think that that's, uh, there's something to be said for learning how to make like a, appropriate substitutions. Um, you know, and, and then just knowing knowing your flavors specifically uh, well enough to know how much you think you should use, you know, in a substitution, right? So if a flavor art flavor is at 2% and you only have a TPA flavor, maybe you should start at 3 or 4%. Yeah. You know, and it, yeah, if you do your single flavor testings, you know 
kind of how to substitute things. You know, it's uh, as opposed to using flavor West yellow cake, maybe I'm using Capella's and I know I have to use a specific amount to replicate almost that flavor. It's never going to taste the same because it doesn't have sugar in it. But, you know. You know, speaking of Capella's yellow cake, I tried Capella's jungle flavors yellow cake. Both. And they just, I don't know what it, J jungle flavors was the better of the two, right, of Capella's. It was, yes. Uh, but Capella's, like, does anybody else get, like, a really off, like, super brutal chemical note from Capella's? Even after, like, a two-week steep, it just tastes funky. Well, I didn't, I didn't go higher than 5%, so I don't know. I didn't go that high, even. I think I went to 4%, 3%. I tried you know, 5%. But, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, I don't, maybe it's just me. So maybe it's probably it's, just me. That's fine. Like It's almost the same lemony kind of note that Flavora's pound cake has when you take it up higher. And it's uh, almost like a lemon chemical kind of background note. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. And, I get that from Flavora's pound cake too. Um, yeah. Although out of all of it, I do like Flavora's pound cake. I do. It It's that, that weird chemical note is almost like the crusty taste to it. Rick says it comes off as kind of a nice like to him. Yeah, I can see yeah. that. Yeah, I, I agree. It's got it's just like there's like an astringent back note to it to me that doesn't See, I get hardcore anise favorite. from Nona's cake. Yeah, Nona's, Nona's cake. Nona's cake, like cake hardcore is hardcore anise. Nona's cake is brutal. I don't I can't I wanted to love that stuff, but I can't vape it. I don't know. I, I have to use it really low and I kinda use it in conjunction with uh, either cupcake batter from Flavora or uh Zeppola. I could use it. I could use. I could see it in the additive range, adding some depth. That'd be yeah. cool. But I could definitely never use it as a single, like a primary flavor. No, it just it kills out every other flavor. It overpowers everything, and it just yeah. it doesn't blend as well. Hopefully, they'll come out with a very plain kind of cake without lemon. <laughs> Joel from Mr. Hardwick just said, "For the pound cake, kind of reminds him of cola." I can see it's got. It's got that a weird, citrusy kind of note to it, yeah. Yeah, it's got that weird kind of like citrus vibe that's like borderline effervescent. I don't know. It's not. It's not. It, it is weird. It's like, but it's like weird. And um, it's I nowhere actually, near like the blueberry muffin. I'm like late that, to the season on bakeries this year. Uh, I just got the <laughs> the next round of Wonder Flavors uh, Super Concentrates, and I have to admit, at first I was wasn't to like into the idea of wonder flavors i don't know why um but everything that i've tried from them so far has been pretty good i think that they're not all in the flavora or flavor art like range of quality but i think that they're all better than the real flavors i've tried i um, liked the ones that i tried i just couldn't vape the ones that i got and you I know sent the, me the I original ones this, so you have the sucralose problem right there's yeah. definitely sucralose in the super concentrate line. Like there's that de it's definitely there. It's even on the MSDS sheets. So it's not like he's trying to he's not it's he's not trying to pull a fast one, right? Like it's it's there. He says it's there. It's, it's already the, sweet. Just don't add more sweetener. <laughs> it's on the sheet, right? You don't need to you definitely don't need to add sweeteners when you're using any of these flavors, but but overall they're really nice. Like I and there hasn't been so much sucralose that I find a lot of coil gunking or anything. It's there, but I I don't it's not like flavor west there, you know. Where it's like 30, 40 percent of the mix, it's it's present, but I don't think that it's overdone. And plus, with flavor art, you get the sugar, and you get well fructose and oh, flavor west. Port, flavor west. Yeah, yeah, you, those are gonna gunk your coils up a lot faster. I mean, right. even a little bit of the flavor of sweetness with the stevia base still gunks your coils, but yeah, it takes it a lot longer. longer. Yeah, it takes forever. Um, but so far, I, everyone smells. All of them smell great, except the sesame seeds. Sesame dough kind of smells weird, but um, but they all smell really great. And the, the few that I've tried so far have been pretty nice. Like they're not bad at all. What's that? Oh, my guitar, my guitar cord. Yeah, I don't. I, it's a guitar cable, and my cat fucks with it sometimes. But I'm just, I just leave it there because I don't have anywhere else to hang it up. Yeah, I, I got the. Uh... Flavor Express Sun Seeds. It it smells like it could be the base flavor of either an ice cream co waffle cone, or peanut butter, or Nutella. <laughs> so I've got three three possible recipes that I'm gonna try. So sunflower seeds. Yeah. Don't they it, don't they have the avocado too? 
Six yeah, I do have that. I have that too. Tell me how it smells. I'm interested. It it's kind of creamy. Kind of smells like uh, kind of smells like peach yogurt. Peach yogurt, huh? Like if you have the peach on the bottom yogurt and you mix it up, it kind of has that almost that note to it. But then there's also almost like a kiwi kind of smell to it. So I don't know what a gallia melon is, but this ripe gallia melon smells like the most authentic ripe cantaloupe I've ever smelled in my life. Like, <laughs> like when you pull the pulp of the seeds out, you know? Yep. Right? And it releases like that super intense like cantaloupe scent into the room. Like that's what this stuff smells like. Yeah, it's a it's like a yellow. Have you it starts with a G, right? Yeah, Gallia, G A L I A. Yeah, it looks Gallia. it looks like a watermelon on the outside, but it's yellow and it's more like a cantaloupe. Man, it smells super incredible. I'm gonna go crazy with that one. It smells really good. So yeah, good job, Frank E Blender. Um, these are pretty awesome. I really dig them. As much that, as I don't uh, like Flavor West, I got a bunch of their naturals too. Mm -hmm. The papaya smells really good. Did you get that Namato bar one that's supposed <laughs> to be a solid chocolate? An Imo bar? Yeah, I haven't tested it. Uh, Tutal says that it's delicious, though. It's probably the best. He says it's the best standalone chocolate he's ever touched. Um, I don't really tend to fuck with chocolates too often, so I haven't had a chance to mess with it. I always go really low with chocolate because I find too high and it ends up burnt tasting to me. Yeah, I like I said, I haven't messed with it. I, chocolates and I don't tend to get along very well. Um, six six weeks steep. That's my advice on chocolates. <laughs> six weeks deep. It sounds crazy, but it works because I had these stupid chocolates that I hated. Like I literally would smell them and test them, and I was like, "This is trash." And I'd set it back on the shelf, and then I test it again, and I'm like, "This is trash." And then at six weeks, the fucking, it was like a perfect chocolate milk. It just, for whatever reason, it's, I have this theory that chocolates are six weeks steep. It's they, not. They are a long steep. Uh, unless you go really, really low. Like I, I literally sh uh, shake and vape the flavor art chocolate, but I only use like 0.15% as a total in the mix. So it's really low, but it's right there. You can still taste it. And I put in like a mint and menthol because that's that's my <laughs> my preference. But it's I like it like that. And I can shake and vape that. And it's not harsh and it does steep out though, and it's it's kind of bland when you get to four or five weeks. So it's it's a quick vape one. So coffee the coffee man was asking about a good high nick mix for his penguin. Um, I just got some reviews back from my fireside recipe. It's available. It's a flavor pack on Bull City Flavors, um, and somebody, it, it one definitely one person um, said that he really loved it in his penguin. Like he really, really super liked it a lot. Uh, I haven't tried the penguin, um, but it's it's similar to the other like mouth to lung like higher nick devices, right? So uh, I think that fireside or or any of the tobacco recipes that Jen or myself or Adam have out would all do well as high nick options in the penguin. Um, they tend to translate, I feel like they translate the best into high nick recipes. Uh, most of my older recipes from my old juice line go into higher nick too. Um, because my hubby still vapes 14 milligram. So everything I mix for him is is made for higher. Uh, but all pretty much all my recipes were designed for, you know, upwards of 24 milligram. It's pronounced my newer ones, not so much. Cop cop L Copal. But half of us say couple. The other half of us call us his bearded holiness. His bearded holiness. Yeah, even my mailman does now, thanks to <laughs> thanks to everybody. That's good. <laughs> That's how all your packages are gonna start coming. <laughs> uh, NTS. So Dave asked what the difference between the fireside on ATF and the one on Bull City flavors. Uh, I used uh, MTS in the original recipe, but I removed it from the release for fire from Bull City flavors. Because while I think it does add something nice to the mix, uh, it doesn't make it very marketable because people don't use MTS very often, um, and they're not too interested. So I, it adds a adds a really nice 
a bit of body to it. But uh, I didn't really feel like it was super necessary for the Bull City flavors release, so I just removed it. Um, so that's that's the difference. Um, that's why I changed it for for Bull City flavors because people uh, don't tend to use uh, MTS for very many things. Um, this is good. I added this passion flower to the uh, to concrete, and it's got a really great note. It's like you're gonna like it. It's like floral and passion fruit together, kind of. Floral. Well, I mean, passion fruit's kind of one of those flavors that comes out a little floral, anyways. But I'm still interested in trying it. So it's the new Inaware one, right? The unreleased one. Yeah. Good. Cool. I need a bunch of. I need all <laughs> those. I need all those flavors. I should. I should hit them up. I was gonna send them to Concrete and let them do some proper reviews on them because I'm not the best flavor note guy. Uh, so Chris Garnier asks, is that the Chris Garnier? That's the juiced. Oh my lord, I've never seen him in chat. So he asks if MTS <laughs> versus Bitter, Bitter Wizard, are they just opposites? No, they're not They're not even, so they're both additives, but they do completely different. Uh, MTS stands for mellow, thick, and smooth, right? So it doesn't sweeten anything. What it does is add a little bit of body and mouthfeel. It smooths out like harsh terpene type, uh, harsh notes, sharp notes. Um, and it gives it kind of like a creamy feel without adding like a necessary creamy flavor, right? And if you go too high, it ends up being kind of woody like oak wood. Yes, yeah, it does. Um, but MTS can be used to fix like some off notes, but I, I don't use it very often because it's like a cheat code. And if you lean on it. Triple A uh, Magic Mask works better for fixing off notes. Yeah, Magic Mask works better. Yeah, MTS is basically triacetin, but there's some other stuff in there too. Yeah. So TPA Smooth is basically just triacetin, but uh, MTS is more than just try said. I can't remember all the ingredients, and I don't. I don't think there's even actual disclosure for it. No. And if you're making um, a if you're making a cream, you can use uh, TPA whipped cream to substitute that out. Yeah, because it's basically just pure try said in anyways. Yeah. Uh, TPA smooth is T TFA's or TPA's version of trying to reverse engineer uh, MTS. So. Um, it's also basically triacetin, and I think I think there's some maltols in there or something. I can't remember exactly. I have to go back and look. Uh, and, and then Chris Garnier, for the Bitter Wizard, what it does is it reduces the amount of perceived sweetness in a recipe. So if you're working with like RY4s, but you want a little more tobacco and a little less sweet, that's what your Bitter Wizard is for, right? Or you're going high VG in tobacco, and you've got too much sweetness from tobacco, or from the VG, from, from it the VG, reduces yeah. that VG sweetness. Yeah, so it reduces the sweetness in an overall flavor. So like if, if you like a recipe, but it's just like a touch too sweet, but you don't want to fuck with the flavorings you're using, you can add a little bit of Bitter Wizard to to drop down that, that sweetness, sweetness level. You don't have to use it in just tobaccos, but that's the most appropriate and most typical use for a Bitter Wizard, I think. I've never used it in anything else, actually, come to think of it, except for a pastry re uh, recipe I did once that I was trying to go for like a more... Savory is not the right word, but less sweet. I experimented trying to put it in cola to see if it would add any kind of tanginess to the tongue, and it didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> I never tried that. I did try. I did try using MTS to give cola some more syrupy body, like more thickness, more density. But yeah, sweetener um, works for that. Uh, it doesn't though. Like. It's the wrong kind of sweet, sweet sweetness, right? So I use caramel and vanilla. Yeah, that's usually that's, those are the two that I use too. However, so. it just it's not the same. Like nothing has got that tanginess enough to give you the the tongue tingle of of having carbonation. No, when somebody FA, cracks that, they're gonna be millionaires. <laughs> FA Cola still gets the closest, I think. Um, I, but it does, but it's still like flat cola. It's still like, well, it tastes more like a gummy bear to me. Really. Like a cola yeah. gummy. Like those cola those, gummies. Yeah, those little cola gummies, yep. The Haribo brand cola gummies. Um, yeah, nobody hits it. That's, that's just like a, a thing that I gave up on. I can make some good soda flavored vapes, but they don't they don't translate the experience very well. But that's all right. Like, I'm not sad about it. <laughs> all right, I'm lying. I'm really fucking sad about it. You know what does do a good job, though, but it only works in fucking root beer is Flavor West Sassafras. Mm-hmm. 
because it's got like that sort of like herbal, like borderline medicinal sort of effervescence, right? Yep. Um, and it works really well to get a fizzy, but it, you, like you're getting herbal cola, like that's the only fucking thing. Yeah, and it only goes in root beer. <laughs> like, well, you can do it. In, I I made a moxie with it that worked out pretty well, I think. Um, Maybe a Dr moxie. Pepper. Moxie, but but nobody. I mean, fucking nobody drinks moxies anymore. Nobody likes moxie. <laughs> <That's, that's... laughs> I love that stuff. It, what the fuck is wrong? They don't with even it? sell it everywhere. Like it's hard to find over here on the East Coast. Oh, it's super hard to find over here. Like, that's yeah, a this, specialty soda right there. That's yeah. a craft, craft soda. It used to be like a thing. Like that was like the thing. Like I mean, like seventy years ago, but still. So, did you guys talk about diminishing returns yet, or no? I haven't got to the diminishing time? returns. I was saving it for the end. So, there there is a point of complexity that you reach. Uh, we, we're adding more flavors isn't going to help you anymore. Or hurt and you like, more. And it's, Well, exactly. That's the, You're going to get less back than you put into it, right? You're going to get less flavor out of your recipe than you put in. Rick tried my moxie. You can ask him about it. I think Dave <laughs> tried it, too. Uh, although I'm not sure how Dave felt about it. I think he had mixed feelings. Uh, <laughs> it was weird, right? Like I used some weird ass shit in there. Anyway, so there's a certain point of complexity where you're adding more, like, isn't the right answer. In fact, 99% of the time, adding more isn't the right answer, I think, um, until you change the balance, right? So if the balance isn't right, then adding more is going to hurt you, right? It's just going to make the balance harder. Now, just just to define for the audience, what do you mean by balance? Right, so so if you're if you're trying to make a pastry with uh, lavender and cream, right? But your pastry is too strong, and your lavender isn't present enough, and the cream isn't creamy, right? That's where your balance is off, right? So you need to like adjust how much pastry you're using versus how much lavender you're using, and then a little bit lower on the, you know, you need to raise the lavender, right? Like that's where you need to adjust those three flavors, and before you start adding your your extra notes. Like those need to be rock solid and in a good place before you can start adding everything else. Yeah. So when you when I talk about balance, what I mean is like you, you need to have like a seventy five or eighty percent complete recipe. <laughs> you know where you're you're happy with the result. Like I can vape this now, but it's missing like this one thing. Then then you work on that one thing. But until it's at that point, you don't go fuck with it. Like. Um, you know, or I mean, don't don't add more stuff to it to try to fix it. Instead, just work on those that that core recipe, right? Get the core recipe right first, because just adding more flavors until it tastes good isn't doing you any favors. Because you're not you're not learning to balance the flavors and get the complexity that's inherent in each flavor. Yeah, um, and that's part of the testing single flavors too. Because if you don't test the single flavor, you don't know how complex that actual flavor on its own is, and in turn balancing it in your recipe will be more difficult. The other part of balance that I actually refer to but probably don't explain enough to people is the balance of taste, which is in cooking is the balance between your your sweet, sour, uh, unami, uh, salty, and... It's counterplay, right? Like it's, you, yes. you gotta have counterplay. Balancing everything together makes a more rounded taste. Um, so if your your flavor is too bitter, you need to balance it with some sweet. You know, pull your bitter back a little bit, maybe lessen that amount of flavoring, add something else that's a little sweeter in there, and it'll give you a better balance between the bitter and the sweet. Salty is a little bit hard for vaping because we don't really get a whole lot of salty perception. Um, there is savory. Nami with you know things like Zen Garden and some of the florals you get the savory and woody things tobaccos are savory yeah definitely there's there's a there's a point where you have to start to to work with contrast right you have to start working with the opposite end of the spectrum that you're in so if you're trying to make you know a strawberry and cream but your strawberry isn't standing out quite right it's just all sweet like try adding something sour to yep. To counterbalance your strawberry and cream, right? So add a little bit of raspberry, like a tart raspberry, not in a wera, but like TPA raspberry sweet, or FA. Or even Sicily. something like FA uh, bitter with or FA sour wizard helps. Yeah, FA, FA sour wizard works really well. Or TPA sour works well too if you don't yep. have FA sour wizard. I like FA sour wizard better, but they're not that different. So um, there's not a huge difference in them. So 
um, there's you definitely want to always work on the contrast, right? Like, because um, the contrast, what it does is you're only adding enough so that the contrast flavor, like lemon or raspberry, isn't something that you taste, but rather something that just causes helps you to perceive the rest of the recipe more clearly. Yeah. Um, which is why they talk about how it makes it pop or whatever, which I, I hate because it's like a buzzword thing, right? But <laughs> but, but that, that's how contrast works, you know, like um, when you add something slightly sour to your meal, you don't taste that sour thing. You just taste a brighter version of the, the darker, sweeter thing. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that makes yeah. sense. I'm a little tired, so I'm not very clear today. I'm still, uh, our town is like completely insane with Eclipse goers, so. In a town of 10,000, we have like 60,000 visitors today. Wow. Uh, there's going to be like 20,000 people that have gone blind tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll just be the way to tell stupid people afterwards is because if, you, if you've gone blind from the eclipse. You, as long as they don't go blind until they've driven at least 20 miles from here, I'm cool with it. There's a, I'm fine, with, I'm fine with natural selection. There was a bunch of car crashes in 19, uh, 1918 when the last one was because they, I guess they didn't know it was coming. So people were just crashing their cars into each other. All kinds of fun, fun stuff. Back when your car had a crank on the front. Yeah. <laughs> You're supposed to? Have I been doing this wrong all this time? And some Model A's out there. Yeah, Second Chance has a great point. Vinegar on scrambled eggs. Who would have thought? But yeah, man, vinegar on scrambled eggs is fucking delicious. A, that's really? why Tabasco on scrambled eggs is so good. Yeah, ketchup. It's just vinegar. Ketchup. Yes, ketchup. Get out of here. Get off this. <laughs> You're done. You're well, done. okay. It has to have ketchup and maple syrup, and oh, it all God. has to be combined with the home fries and the pancakes, and you take all of it in one bite. <laughs> what is happening even right now? <laughs> the only thing that I can blink and add to breakfast is sausage gravy. All right, sausage gravy. Next, next thing you know. Gravy. Uh, Heinz is going to come out with a, a maple syrup ketchup. <laughs> now, what Jennifer is saying about the food, right? It's it's really good to learn that. I posted two links. Uh, one is the, the flavor star, they call it. And it kind of shows how the different pieces of flavoring works. And then the other one's a flavor wheel <clears throat> and shows how they complement each other. And there's another book you guys can look if you're really committed is called the flavor bible and uh that just covers all the pairings for all kinds of different flavors but um it'll really help like, you you can't find that as a pdf anywhere unless you're jen jarvis <laughs> i feel like we should get like royalties for shilling that book so goddamn many times like, i probably oh, made, i probably shit. sold like ten thousand copies of that fucking book that's a great book I have four pers I have four physical copies of that book. Like uh, right. that's what I read when I'm on the toilet, man. And it just it's if you know it's there's some thinking behind cooking that works really well when you make recipes here is understanding well how you know balancing your sweet and sour and balancing your bitter notes with you know more like so like when you try you know one of the things is like a, a dry vape and you know if you're using woods and tobaccos like a lot of times those need like a cream low behind it or else it's just like dry as could be i had a i just made this fucking vape it tastes like it smells in the room like something's on fire because it got a little black fire it's got oak wood and i'm i was vaping it in the a hotel room and i'm like they're gonna think the fucking thing's on fire because it smells like wood on fire and it's a it's in progress right but I'm, I'm still vaping the thing but when you get that that like harsh uh you know dry note that you get from like some bakeries and definitely tobaccos definitely the the wood woodsy kind of vapes you know cream will balance it out i'm kind of experimenting right now with trying to over sweeten and see if the the sweetener itself will wetting it up a little bit so that you wouldn't have to rely on creams or but it completely just, mutes everything or where yeah exactly so it's like it's 11 percent mutes no, everything not 11 percent <laughs> oh i that. tested it i i i went crazy and went like 11 percent on cap super sweet 
<laughs> so cool. Nice. Asked if we let cool. if we let our tobacco recipes breathe. Um, and I, I do not know. I let them steep naturally, yeah. but I don't let them. I don't ever let recipes breathe for anything. Like I think it's a ridiculous. No offense intended to anyone who believes in this, but when you breathe the recipe, all you're doing. It may reduce harshness. That's true, but you're re you're releasing a ton of flavoring in the process and reducing the quality. If you're having a hard time with a harsh mix, revisit the mix or let it steep longer with the cap on. Don't ever let it steep with the cap off because it just ruins it. Right? You let in air. Yeah. And you lose all of the lightweight top notes that just float away. Right. It all just it just evaporates, right? It just goes away. So don't 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 breathe your tobaccos or any other mix for that matter. Just let it steep longer if if you if it needs a long steep. That's fine. And uh, he also asked if it's if he feels like it's better to use innerware dirty neutral base. Um, I personally I think like that, it. I think the innerware dirty neutral base tastes like a filthy ashtray that someone took a piss in. Uh, I can't stand the stuff. It's disgusting mm -hmm. to me, but some people that are really into that ashy cigarette experience, like love it and think it's awesome. I just, uh, after being off of cigarettes for so long, I, I like tobaccos, but I don't like, uh, I don't like the ashy cigarette like tobaccos at all. I like think it M10s. depends on how much you use though too, because I'm using it down at like 0 0.15, 0 0.25, 0 0.35%. So I'm just using a small amount just to accent that little bit of dirty background note, just to give you that slightly ashy on the exhale, but it doesn't overpower the rest of the tobacco. It also depends greatly on what tobacco you're mixing it with. If yeah. you're mixing it with our way four, it's not going to taste good. If you mix right. it with something more stout, like uh, uh, flavor or flavors, red burly and uh, Arabian tobacco, those two are a little more of a stout tobacco. The, the red burly has a little bit of a sweeter note that kind of offsets the ashy but the Arabian comes in there with that more stout, rich tobacco, and it just kind of play, lays on top of the dirty neutral base. It's, no, it's a really good combo. And I understand why some people like it, but the, even just the hint of ash, if I use it at the, in the 0.15 rate, because I tried it low too, like I, you know, I did my due diligence. Um, but even at that 0.05 or 0.15, like it was just kind of offensive to me. I didn't care for it. Um, but it's a preference. Of course, I also right? like Blackfire at 5%, so. Yeah, I can't. I can't go over half a percent with that. Like five percent black fire, uh, like three or four percent cam tea. <laughs> I can vape my tobaccos up high. Uh, Steve Costa asks if nicotine helps with the steeping process. If it's better to add nic when it's mixed, or if it's better to wait to add it. The only reason I would ever wait to add it is if my juice was going to sit for like six months or a year, right? Like yeah. Uh, nicotine does affect the way your juice steeps. Um, and causes some oxidation, and it does make some mild changes in flavoring. So if you find that your recipe doesn't, I mean, I don't know. I, it doesn't make big changes, though. It doesn't make big differences. So it's I a little more fullness, do and I don't notice it changed the steeping all that much. Like, I mix no. a lot of stuff at zero just to, to test. Right. So, I mean, I when, I when I'm mixing all day long, like, um, or doing, like, testing for clients or something like that, I just vape zero milligrams. So like sometimes I'll come back and add some nicotine um, to when I'm done with it, right? Like after I'm done testing all day. But typically, no, I don't, I don't find the, that that uh, adding nicotine later helps unless you, unless you think the juice is going to sit for like six months or a year or something like that where you'll, I just fucking lost a bottle of juice. I don't know where it went. Uh, yeah. Some people, some people have recipes that sit for six months or a year. Like, or they make up liter size bottles and they're vaping it for six months. Right. Yeah. Some people make huge batches and this is for a really long time. Uh, I personally don't do that. Um, I, I usually don't get past the 30 mil stage for most recipes. Um, yeah. That, that's mostly I get, what I have. I get bored easily. Even if I really love a flavor, like I just get bored of it easily. Um, even my favorite recipes, I, I don't vape more than 30 mils of because a 30 mil takes me a while too. That's like three or four days. It's like a day and a half for me. <laughs> it's a day for me. Well, I usually have like two or three mixes, right? Like I don't make just yeah. one 30 mil and vape just that 30 mil for, it would only last me like one or two days, right? Um, but I vape, I make like three or four and I rotate them, right? Like throughout the week. So like a 30 mil lasts me a couple of days. So like when I'm testing a new recipe, that like when I'm actually in development mode, I will make 60 mils and then I will only vape that. So like I won't switch and it it really forces me to like love it or hate it. So by the time I'm done with the 60, 
you know, it's probably like two, three days, maybe four, right? And then, but one, it kind of steeps itself a little more as you're vaping it. So if you if it's something that can be shaken vape, it kind of works its way through to coming together a little better. Two, it, it gives you an idea where it's going as you vape it over a couple of days. And three, forcing myself to just vape that flavor makes it more makes me more analytical about it where like i don't get to switch up i have to really fucking like it or it's not gonna work and then my final test is that when it runs out do i want to mix it again and if i if i'm craving it and i really want to mix it again it's ready to be released that's how i see it if i'm like yeah it was okay it doesn't go out so that's kind of my way of taking 60 mils and working through it over a couple of days just to really force myself to love it or hate it. Cause like you said, you get tired of it. I totally would rather not vape the same flavor like that, but it really helps, helps you when you're working on a recipe to get almost obsessively one noted with it. And then by the time you get done with it, if you still wanted to vape more, that's a good recipe, at least for how I how I do it. Yeah, I have a different approach, but it's it's not too different, right? Like I'll, I'll make a, a 15 mil of the first batch, right? And I'll vape it pretty much exclusively, but then I force myself to revisit the recipe, right? And then uh, if I feel that it, it's pretty strong on its own, I'll make it by itself or with one small change, and then I'll vape that again. But I force myself to revise every 15 mils. Um, or to re at least sit down and revisit it, right? So I know that it's time when I run out, you know, um, That's good. and look at a different a different approach. Because I, I, I feel like I get, um, I started to like kind of hit this like, like level of obsession. If I'm like vaping it too long, I start to overthink, right. you know. So if I just stop and stop what I'm doing at, at the 15 mil marker, which is like about a day, right? Like uh then i can stop and be like all right well here's what i liked about it here's what i didn't like now let's let's go to the revision one you know and then i'll do and sometimes i can do two or three of those in a day if uh if i have the whole day off or something uh chris garnier is bringing the the big questions and he's asking about how uh, aromatic food pairings work and i want to answer that question but we're already at the end of our hour and i would probably need an entirely new episode to cover like how food pairing works at a at the aroma level, right? Like that's. Oh, I watched a really good. Um, it was like a three hour long talk on that from micro gastronomy people. <laughs> yeah, if you can find it's the link, very you should, fascinating. You should, you should post it. Is it uh, on YouTube or something? Um, I think they were on YouTube. It there was a whole lecture series on on flavor pairings and food flavorings. Um, they were also on a few websites that were. Uh, associated with with flavorings and food production not not necessarily vaping chris um, keep an eye on the mix life group i'll see if jen, jen can you see if you yeah. can get that link up? i'll see if i can find them i watched them like two years ago so i <laughs> we'll uh, see if i, I can have, find them. there's some there's a new netflix series too about food stuff that's more like on the scientific level um but if you just if you just look up gastronomy videos you can you can find some really cool stuff oh you what's, can post yeah. a link chris go ahead what's the uh netflix series I can't remember what it's called right now. No. Uh, I know the, the guy that was talking in the, the lecture I was watching has a restaurant, I think, in New York. He was talking about how they put their salad on top of a bed of air that has been uh, scented with grass. So the tomato tastes super fresh while you're oh, sitting yeah. there and your pillow is deflating of, of fresh cut grass. Yeah, and that kind of stuff, you know, can enhance an aroma. Even though you're not eating grass, you're smelling it and eating the tomato and it tastes so much better and bright and brings back the memory of summer kind of idea. Yeah, that's a good link, Chris. Hang on one second. Let me see if I can find it. It's about, it, it was just a documentary about this, uh, like, chef. I think it was actually an Anthony Bourdain thing. Uh, if you haven't watched Chef's Table, that's a great series. Chef's Table is a really good series. Yeah, that's good. And then what I've been <clears throat> hooked on is the Great uh, British Baking Show. Mm -hmm. which, the Great British Bake Off. Is that good? Yeah. I haven't watched it yet. It, it's so good. It's Marvel silly. Defenders just came out, so I'm like, uh, I'm hyper focused. It's oh. silly and raunchy, and it's like real, like light TV, but 
they do really cool pairings when they cook. So they'll do like rose, cardamom, ginger, different kind of things. So you can pick up like a recipe idea there in a bakery side. So you can really get inspiration from everywhere in the food world if you're looking for it and then just know how to translate that to your flavors. I did just watch that Jiro Dreams of Sushi the other day. That was pretty good. That was good. I think just because of his like a, his approach to the, the art, it was super interesting. But I think it's, I mean, it doesn't really apply to mixing at all. <laughs> uh, you know, because it's fish, right? Oh, if you go in the Mix Life app, uh, there's a, there's a, there's Jen Show, Concrete Rivers Flavor Notes, our show, and then there's another thing called DIY Mix Crew. And I, I've added like a hundred videos in there and maybe 25 of them are like flavor pairing, flavor sense, the way your, your scent, your nose smell works with flavor. So like really broad kind of different videos that would help. What are you giggling about? You're killing me. Adam. The way your nose smell works. <laughs> your nose smell works. The, well, the, way, smell. the way smell works with the way you taste. Right, yeah. where your olfactory affects its flavor. Right? Your olfactory. There we go. <laughs> All right. I think we're, we're hitting uh, the end of our hour. We'll be back next week. Uh, thank you, Jen and Adam, of course, for joining us today. Thank you, everybody, for viewing. Um, I'll be posting another poll thread in the uh, Mixed Life Facebook group. Somebody had a link to it. Oh, i just get one real quick. Um, I'll post a poll there if there's something you want to see us talk about um, next weekend. Then just uh, put it in the put it in the thing. And uh, we uh, we haven't discussed the uh, Did I miss me versus Rick. Okay, so well, so we don't we have we have the guidelines set. We have the guidelines set for you, but Rick needed okay. a break. Remember from yes. So our last announcement. So we're going to actually announce the contest next Sunday. Okay. Um, with the with the rules and the restrictions and all the goodness. Right. Well, I did talk about diminishing returns, Christian Garnier. You <laughs> cheeky bugger! You just missed it. Not my fault. <laughs> no. So uh, yeah, we'll announce the contest next week. And uh, with the restrictions, this is going to be ridiculous. So we've got some fun, fun, fun <laughs> shenanigans planned. Right? I am not vaping anything that will make me throw up. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just no, warning we, you. We have a we have a plan. It's going to be the okay. it's going to be the best plan. It's the huge. Plan. <laughs> we have wonderful plans. Folks. Aren't they tremendous? They're tremendous. No. Uh, yeah, it's going to be good. Wow, we just got a bunch of uh, requests. So yeah. Check out the Big Slide Facebook group, and I'll put a poll up sometime tonight or tomorrow morning asking what you guys want to see for your next show. Uh, Jen's going to do some shit talking with uh, Rick next week, so Rick, be ready for some trash talking. She's going to go like full WWE SmackDown on you, so <laughs> you better watch out. All right, thanks, everybody, for watching. Subscribe. And, yeah, click the subscribe. Give me a little thumbs up, fancy pants. I'll talk to you guys later.